Welcome to High Level History, where we explore history through the lens of powerful dynasties, like today's episode on the Bonapartes. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on our latest episodes. We appreciate your support. Napoleon, the family's titles. Napoleon became Emperor of France in 1804 in one of the most impressive elevations from common man to royal in history. Starting with the Siege of Toulon in 1793, Napoleon in nine short years became the authoritative figure in one of the world's preeminent powers. He was not naive to his and his family's precarious social position amongst the royal class. Wanting to solidify the Bonaparte name as a legitimate dynasty and to reign control of his expansive empire, Napoleon elevated many of his family members to royal offices to both act as extensions of himself and to help modernize the Bonaparte name as a and help normalize the Bonaparte name as the legitimate dynasty across the continent. In this episode, I explore the titles Napoleon bestowed on his brothers and children through his tenure as emperor. Joseph, Napoleon's elder brother, was originally trained as a politician and lawyer. In 1806, he was created king of Naples and Sicily. Based on his brother's decree, the crown, if retained, would have been passed down to Joseph's descendants. In Naples, Joseph was well-liked. Eager to rule, he enacted many of the reforms Napoleon had popularized in France. Feudal privileges were reversed, forced drafting into the army was stopped, church lands were nationalized, and a system of women's education established. Ultimately, Joseph was immensely popular in Naples, leaving the burgeoning kingdom in better financial state than he found it. He doubled the revenue of the crown in only two years. But it was this talent that was his downfall. In August of 1808, he was reassigned away from Napoli, where Marshal Morat would rule, and instead moved to Spain. In Spain, Napoleon had secured the abdication of the Spanish monarchs, Charles IV and Ferdinand VII. His military occupied the country. Joseph took the position of king on the 15th of June, 1808. The opposition to Bonaparte was evident from the onset. The Spanish fought valiantly for their independence, in what is now known as the Spanish War of Independence. Eventually, Joseph abdicated his throne after a loss to a British-led coalition at the Battle of Vittoria. He left Spain for the final time on June 18, in June 1813. Joseph did not retain any of his titles and ultimately retired in the United States. Lucien, a younger brother of Napoleon, was a politician as well, being elected a member of the Council of 500 on Corsica. As his brother rose, so did he. In 1799, he was appointed as the Minister of the Interior, this role was instrumental in rigging the French referendum of 1800 in favor of Napoleon. Lucien, after his resignation as minister, also served as the ambassador to the Bourbon court of Spain. He eventually went to self-imposed exile due to his conflicts with Napoleon. Upon Napoleon's fall, he became the Prince of Canino and Mignano. The title is geographically based in Italy. The titles were conferred to Lucien via the Pope in 1814 and 24, respectively. The family actually retained this title for a century until it went dormant with the death of Roland Bonaparte in 1924. Lucien is unique amongst the Bonaparte family, for he actively rejected the imperial honors and benefits others in his family relished. Louis Bonaparte initially spent his youth in the army and served on the Egyptian campaign with Napoleon. He rose magnificently, in no part due to his brother. By 25, Louis was a general. He then married Hortense de Beauharnais, the daughter of his sister-in-law, Empress Josephine. Seeking to better control the Low Countries, Louis was made King of Holland in 1806. Napoleon hoped Louis would be a little more than a figurehead, but he had other ideas. He tried to improve the life of his subjects, much like his brother Joseph. He actively ingratiated himself by trying to learn Dutch, calling himself Lodwick I, the Dutch version of his name. Ultimately, it was Louis' action, however, actions, however, that endeared him to his people, both during the explosion of Leiden in 1807 and the flooding of 1809. He showed he cared by leading relief efforts, and this really impacted his subjects. Ultimately, Napoleon was outmaneuvered by Louis, forcing his younger brother to abdicate after Napoleon removed all French troops from Holland, leaving the country open to invasion from the British. Citing his inability to protect the kingdom, Napoleon demanded the abdication. Louis abdicated in favor of his oldest son. This did not appear to impact Napoleon in the slightest, as he annexed the country on July 9th through the decree of Rambouillet. Louis I, as he was known, was surprisingly popular in the kingdom, and after Napoleon's fall, he retired and became the Count of saint Leu, a strictly honorary title. It was his son who eventually became Napoleon III. Lastly, Jerome, the youngest Bonaparte sibling. He was a Navy man, having joined the service after his brother had gained notoriety in 1800. 
After an error at sea, he fled to North America, where he had an adventurous youth, accruing debts, womenizing, and ultimately getting married to a rich heiress, Elizabeth Patterson, daughter of one of the richest men in the United States, William Patterson. Ultimately, Jerome had his marriage annulled by his brother and rejoined the ranks of the Bonapartes in Europe. On leaving his wife and their, new baby, and their new baby, Jerome was elevated to admiral in the navy in 1805, and later king of Westphalia in 1807. The kingdom of Westphalia was a German kingdom crafted out of the former Holy Roman Empire. Part of the Confederation of the Rhine, these kingdoms played an integral role in Europe as the buffer between France and her main German foes in Prussia and Austria. As with, as with all other Napoleonic kings, he enacted liberal reforms to match Napoleonic France, including establishing a constitution, liberating serfs, and enacting the Napoleonic Code as a legal system. Unfortunately, Jerome was a spendthrift, and his luxurious ways bankrupted his kingdom. After Napoleon's fall, he was given the title Prince of Montfort by his father-in-law, King Frederick of Württemberg. This title still lives on and is currently being used by the heir of the dynasty, Jean Christophe, Prince Napoleon, Prince of Montfort, though it holds no political power. Beyond his brothers, Napoleon also bestowed titles on his children and stepchildren. His natural-born son, Napoleon II, or Francois, was born in 1811. Instead of the French title, the traditional one, of Dauphin, Napoleon made him King of Rome. However, this title was short-lived as the empire fell in 1814. Napoleon ultimately abdicated in favor of his son, now known informally as Napoleon II. He would never take power. After the signing of the Treaty of Fontainebleau, he was given the right to use the title Prince of Parma of Piacenza. His mother, Mary Louise, would become Duchess of Parma. However, ultimately he moved to Austria, where his mother was from and his grandfather still ruled. He was made the Duke of Reichstadt. Sadly, Francois died at the age of 21 in 1832. He had no heirs. Napoleon's stepdaughter, Hortense, was married to his brother Louis. Thus, she was both his stepdaughter and sister-in-law. Due to her marriage, she became Queen of Holland. Hortense did not particularly like her husband. Despite this, the couple had three healthy boys. In 1814, at the fall of Napoleon, she was created the Duchess of St. Leu, by Louis XVIII, with the lobbying by Tsar Alexander I of Russia. Hortense had three children with Louis. Her third son, Charles Louis, would later become the French Emperor Napoleon III. He took the title third out of respect for his cousin, who was officially known as Napoleon II. Lastly, Napoleon's stepson, Eugène de Beharnais. Born in 1781, he was a teen when Napoleon married his mother, Josephine. He was a military man serving in the war in the Vendée on the general staff. He would go on to serve under Napoleon in the Italian and Egyptian campaigns. He was ultimately promoted to Brigade General and a French Prince in 1804, despite being a stepson. This was not the norm in that era. Many believe he was the most adept of all Napoleon's family due to the key roles he played. He was the Viceroy of the Kingdom of Italy during Napoleon's peak, and he ruled the kingdom relatively well, showing a genuine talent as an administrator. He modernized the country, developing infrastructure like roads, draining marshes, and, of course, installing the Napoleonic Code. He was also instrumental in maintaining relationships with the Holy See. Ultimately, when Napoleon fell, he retired to Germany. He even remained neutral during Napoleon's Hundred Days, something that can't be said for his other family. Eugene was married to the Princess Augusta, a daughter of Maximilian, King of Bavaria. As a result, he was created the Duke of Lechtenberg. This title still exists with the current holder being the 11th Duke. Ultimately, Napoleon, like any other person, had a breadth of different family members, some ambitious and capable, others lazy, bon vivants. Regardless of their merits, Napoleon tried, like all dynasty builders, either royal or in business, to use his family to his benefit, either by being puppets, marrying into key families, and most importantly, fighting by his side in military campaigns. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you for listening. Bye.